All right, guys, so today we're going to be talking about the Pythagorean theorem. So if we're looking at a right triangle, okay, so once again, the Pythagorean theorem only works with a right triangle, okay? And how we know that it's a right triangle is when we see this square right there, okay? So we know when we see that square, we're working with a right triangle. Now, acuérdase, un right triangle tiene 90 grados. So that's what's important. The Pythagorean theorem solamente trabaja con este tipo de triángulo. Okay? Now, in your triangle, tenemos two sides, dos lados, lado A y lado B. Okay? Normalmente, we say side A, el lado más pequeño, side B, el lado mediano, y después el lado más largo would be your hypotenuse, lado C. Okay. Los lados A y B forman ese 90 grados. El hypotenuse siempre va a estar enfrente de ese 90 grados. Entonces, like here, you're looking at your 90 degree square. Your hypotenuse is located directly in front, enfrente. Okay. Lados A y B forman el 90 grados y en el lado opuesto o enfrente de ese 90 grados está su hypotenuse. So if we take a look at the Pythagorean theorem, okay, la ecuación is a squared plus b squared equals c squared, okay, entonces en 7.1 trabajamos con raíz cuadrada, entonces ahora vamos a ver cómo eso trabaja con esta ecuación, okay, en, aprendimos que el raíz cuadrado es el opuesto de los números cuadrados, okay? So it's the opposite. So we're gonna need to use that here. Let's go down to this example. So example number one is finding the length of the hypotenuse, okay? Entonces, el hypotenuse, acuérdate su lado C. So side C. Es el lado más largo. So here, si vemos, tenemos 5 y tenemos 12, okay? Esos son el lado más pequeño, el lado mediano, y tenemos lado C. So we have to find side C. I'm going to start with my Pythagorean theorem. So anytime I do this, I still will write out the equation. I still will write my A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Okay, decimos que el lado A es el lado más pequeño. So that's going to be my side A. Side B is the side in the middle. So this is side B. Now remember, A, side A, con side B forman ese 90 grados. On the opposite side, siempre va a ser su lado C, su lado más largo. Okay, that's your longest side. So now I'm just going to take these numbers and plot them in. So I'm going to have 5 squared plus 12 squared equals C squared. Okay, so 5 squared. Sabemos que 5 cuadrado, this means 5 times 5. 12 cuadrado, 12 times 12. Okay, so now... 5 por 5, 25. 12 por 12, 144. And your C squared comes down. Do not forget that squared. That's very important. Okay, when I add these two together, I'm going to get 169 equals C squared. Now, we said to undo, para cancelar este cuadrado, we have to do the opposite. ¿Cuál es el opuesto o the opposite of un número cuadrado? Okay, yep. We have to take the square root. Es solo lo opuesto, okay? So we're going to take the square root of these two numbers. So square root, square root. That cancels. Now, 
if you're um calculator if you don't have a calculator if you're using the calculator on your phone okay en su teléfono si usted da vuelta si está en la calculadora y da vuelta a su teléfono te da más opciones en su teléfono el botón va a aparecer bueno en el, mi teléfono yo tengo un iphone aparece así okay for your square root so you're going to want to use that vaya a apretar 169 y después el botón del square root okay so again you're just gonna if you're on your phone you're gonna hit, put in 169 and then you're gonna hit that square root button on your phone when you do that you should get an answer of 13 is your side c okay let's do a few more problems together okay so let's take a look at this one number one on your own so again side a side b side c side c siempre en el lado opuesto o mirando o enfrente however you want to tell yourself so that you remember it's always there in front of that 90 degrees okay yo siempre empiezo con la ecuación now i'm gonna have eight squared plus 15 squared equals c squared de nuevo 8 squared es solamente 8 por 8 and 15 squared is 15 por 15 all right so my 8 squared is 64 and 15 squared 225 you add these up and you get 2 89 equals c squared now the only way to cancel that is to take the square root that cancels again on my phone i'm going to put 289 and then i'm going to look for that square root button hit that and you should get 17 is side c Let's look at number two. Number two looks a little different and a little scary only because we have fractions now, okay? Pero todavía voy a empezar con la ecuación. Now, the shortest side. I'm gonna take this, make this A, make this B, side C de nuevo. Siempre el lado más largo enfrente de su 90 grados. So here, I'm going to have 3 over 10 squared plus 2 over 5 squared equals C squared. Now, con fracción, acuérdase, cuando usted está multiplicando, you're just multiplying 3 over 10 times 3 over 10. 2 over 5 times 2 over 5. And you just multiply straight across okay entonces 3 por 3 9 10 por 10 100 2 por 2 4 5 por 5 25 now la cosa importante aquí es acordarse usted no puede sumar esto si los denominadores no son igual and so here they're not the same tengo que convertir uno Este lo voy a multiplicar por 4. Now I'm going to have 9 over 100 plus 16 over 100 equals C squared. Ahora lo podemos sumar. 9 más 16 is 25 and your denominator stays the same. Now, tenemos que sacar el raíz cuadrado of both sides. Now, the good thing here is estos son cuadros perfectos. Okay, they're perfect squares. So, you can even think about this as the square root of 25 over the square root of 100. Because they are perfect. So, the square root of 25 is 
5 and the square root of 100 is 10. Now, can I leave it like this? No. You need to make sure that you simplify. Podemos dividir entre 5 and you get 1 over 2. Okay? You need to, need to, need to simplify. Okay, I have one more problem here, but I'm going to leave that one for you guys to solve and see if you get the correct answer. So that's all the practice you have for part one. Now go ahead, start your practice on big ideas, and then you have an exit ticket.